We've got to recognize that we're in a new era, where people throughout America were marching in the streets and protesting night after night after night and working together to destroy structural racism in ways that we've never seen before. Then as soon as we start to see some fundamental changes, we get hit with COVID. And it starts knocking folks in the box and making that casket drop. So if you're listening to this, that means you survived. And I'm thankful. So while you're here, make your inner world your outer world by understanding fear keeps a child safe but keeps men average. And reject your own words and the ideas from others that work against you. And stay focused on slaying that dragon. Because the reality is that there's almost endless opportunity out here for us. But there's rules to this. We've got to educate ourselves and put our sights on goals with a massive payoff. If we treat time like it's precious and stay away from distractions, if we remain disciplined and hyper-focused on that grand vision for ourselves, we can reach the highest levels. And even when you get there, you're going to want to stay on top, so you're going to have to maintain that same hyper-focus and discipline that got you there. It also means remaining flexible to new opportunities and understanding your own risk tolerance, and that means understanding nuance at the highest levels. But you can do it. You can do it if you're not there already. You've got a heavy workload, so make sure you get some self-care along the way. And make sure you keep your inner circle small and filled with people who love you, that you can trust. Because it's only after you slay that dragon that you can share your gold. <laughs> I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Man, I've been gone for a minute. I've been enjoying my summer. I've been traveling. I've been working hard. Uh, life has been really good, and I hope life has been great for you as well. But I want to talk about something that's very important, and that's speaking strength in the black men. Because there's so many in the black manosphere that don't speak strength in the black men. And to be fair, generally, it's unintentionally. Sometimes it's on purpose that you've got people that actually are just talking shit online and wasting your time and keeping you distracted because it's a grift. But for many people, it's unintentional. And we'll get in, into why. And so recently, I was on a BGS panel. And he was talking about submission. And you know, I've been talking about submission for a few years now on my channel. I've messaged Kevin Samuels about it. He's talked about it. I've, I've been on other social media apps trying to get the word out. And I'm seeing more and more and more people outside of YouTube talking about submission in ways that I haven't seen before. And I'd like to say that I had my hand in that. And for me, submission isn't really about making a woman submit and controlling her. No, it's about empowering black men to form families in ways that is best for us, that's best for our children and best for the women that we love and form families with, best for the wives that we marry. That's what it's about. So when BGS was talking about submission and, and you, you heard it, Sergeant Willie Pete and BGS Edmore were you know, kind of going back and forth on this submission issue again, so I hopped on his panel to talk about it and, you know, BGS was argumentative and combative and, and kind of had a, a, like an adverse stance towards me the entire time. And that happens a lot with me. And I know he don't fuck with me that much cause I got a white wife and he don't like that shit. So he keeps me at a distance and, and, and so that's kind of where he's at. So I'm on his panel and I'm talking about submission and he's basically shutting me down telling me what i'm saying is completely wrong it won't work and then he and then he ended up kicking me off his panel and and, and to be fair maybe i kind of deserve some of that because i told him he's speaking weakness in a black man but i believe that to be absolutely true so basically what happened was i'm on his panel panel and i go well bgs you know part of this issue here with black men is we don't have a culture for ourselves where we form families based off our own requirements, based off our own needs, based off our own wants. We don't really speak to each other in a way where black men family plan and really exercise our, our family planning agency and autonomy, where we say we require submission or whatever it is that we require, but collectively we have a culture where black men say, if you're gonna date a black man or, or marry a black man or start a family with a black man, this is the cultural norms 
in, in, instilled by us. These are our own cultural norms and our own standard. And as black men, we need to develop that. And he didn't even he didn't even want me to even say that on his channel. He started interrupting me, cutting me off, changing the subject. And then he goes, well, we just got to work, worry, worry about politics. We just have to worry about politics. And uh, and I go, well, there's a symbiotic relationship between politics and culture and culture and politics where the culture can it can it can shape policy and the, the policy can shape culture and he goes no that's not true so he knows that matter of fact he knows that's true because it's common sense and a simple google search have gotten many books about this of course culture can shape politics you can have a cultural revolution that helps spur war or regime change which spurs policy change just like what's going on in iran right now when the women are you know are being attacked by the morality police because they're you know doing whatever they're doing like not wearing burqas and the police come snatch them up now they're having these open-air protests in iran because they want policy changes and will it work it might work if it works that's just another example one of many throughout history where culture uh ha impacts policy and he says it doesn't work so you know he's, he's, he's not being intellectually honest He's being intellectually dishonest. He knows what the truth is. And so I told him that. And so he said, it won't work. It won't work. I, I said, so we shouldn't even try. He goes, yeah, we shouldn't even try. I said, you're speaking weakness in the black men. If you're telling black men that they shouldn't, that, that us black men, that we shouldn't create a culture for ourselves and practice family play, planning agency and autonomy, where we say we want women cut from this cloth we want families uh, built on this structure that we that this is how we do it as black men when it comes to our own families he said we shouldn't even try so i had to tell him that he's speaking weakness in the black men because i would that would be i would be a fool not to that isn't what he said was ridiculous that is a ridiculous thing to say and it was sad that nobody else actually backed me up on that in fact uh, his sycophants actually started trying to change the subject and talk about everything else and he and he kicked me off and it's interesting because edward anderson did the same thing he kicked me off his panel before when bgs was on there so neither of them written these are two of my favorite used to be at least two of my favorite youtube creators content creators but they don't fuck with me like that and part of it is because i got a white wife but another part is i get kicked off a lot of panels to be honest and that's because i'll just say exactly how it is I will just say exactly how it is and I will t and I will take it there. And a lot of black people are not comfortable with black men who speak with authority and who lay down the law. And it, that disturbs a lot of black people. That's just what it is. And when I say these things, I do it on behalf of black men. You know that. You know that. So I just find it real odd that a black man wouldn't want other black men to create a culture where they say we require submissive women and this is what this this is what submissive women means and even if it's not the word submissive just interchange interchange that with cooperative or you know whatever words you want to use for women and then we just use that as a framework and we you know and, and we put the underpinnings underneath there to, to hold it up but then i then i look at why like a guy like edward we know, man, he ain't deal, he don't deal with women like that, man. Edward, we know you ain't dealing with chicks like that. We're, we're not, we know you can, but we know that you don't, right? So, and, and he talks about, I don't want to get married and marriage should marriage be con, contracts. And, you know, and he's in his, you know, early to mid thirties now. And he ain't going to be, have, probably not going to be having children. Maybe he will, but he don't really sound like he want to wants to be a father. He most certainly sounds like he doesn't want to be a husband and he doesn't want a wife. And he, he like, he's not going down that family route. So what's he do? He gets online and he talks about the guy gynocracy. So he doesn't want a family for himself. So he just runs off at the mouth about the about women that he don't want in the first place and then with bgs and so that's why you know edward's really comfortable with sucking up to bgs and kicking me off his panel because bgs is the same way bgs has talked about how his family i forget how he said it though but he comes from a gynocratic family where i think he's got like a bunch of brothers and sisters by different fathers or something like that and then he said you know he says that 
his baby's mother you know he never married her so he actually created a single mother he actually created the problem that he talks about which is fine i mean i'm not going to judge him but it just speaks to this to really why he he doesn't like a guy like me and the, and so then he creates a baby's mama he has kids i don't even know if his son got married but then he has a daughter he may or may not have got married but he didn't marry a black woman and then he has a daughter and then his daughter becomes a single mother she you know she's a baby's mama she doesn't marry a black man so he comes from a gynocratic family he made a single mom by getting a woman pregnant not marrying her and then he then he actually had the baby and then his daughter actually never got married either to a black man and she became a unwed mother so then he then he comes out here and complains about this situation that he helped create and then when black men say no we're going a different direction he says no you shouldn't even try that you shouldn't even say those things and that's speaking weakness into black men why do why is it that so many in the black manosphere talk about everything else except for how to build a successful relationship with a woman to have a, a strong family and an intact family that's rewarding that's loving that's nurturing and fulfilling very few of us do that i'm one of the few channels out there that have these type of conversations but i know a lot of black men just either don't want to hear it or they're doing it already so they don't need to hear it right it's almost like one or two boxes either you're living that reality or you're not interested in that reality and i think not enough of us talk about this so it doesn't really expose black men to what's possible when it comes to family structure so it keeps us very fearful which we should be you know i'm well aware of that but at the same time man there's different ways to have massive success in building your own family if you know what you're doing and a guy like bgs doesn't know what he's doing he may he's got a video in response to me where he says black men do not ask women for submission and that's how he thinks he doesn't think that black men should require submission now i know why i know why and i'm gonna tell you why because i was on bgs i was on the roger report and bgs hopped on there and i was saying the same thing this is like a year ago and i was saying the same thing i go you know roger what black men need to do we need to create a culture for ourselves and roger agrees with me and he talks about this uh that we need to build a cu culture by black men for black men where we build families for ourselves, for the outcomes of our children and the outcomes for the women that we start families with and the women that we marry, where we go. We want a quality, cheerful, happy, healthy, submissive wife. And if you don't want to use submissive, you can say something else, but it doesn't matter. The point is, is that black men lay down the law and we go, this is how we form our, our own families. This is our cultural norm. And if you don't fit into this, we're going to replace you with a woman who will, because it's not really about skin tone. Like, you know, you want to keep it black if you can, but if you can't keep it black, well, black men can still form families and still have a black family, so to speak. You know, and maybe it's a little different type of family, but it's still our families and we're just going to do that. We're going to normalize that so we can just breed out the dysfunction. We're going to breed out the dysfunction out of the black family by making sure that the culture is what's important and not skin tone. And, you know, you and within that, if you do that, what you're going to have, I mean, it's every anybody, if you even just go ahead and play it all out. What will happen is that before we get into that, let's say this, that. So then BJS says, this is what he said. He goes, no, nah, truth. No, you can't say that because if you say that, then black men will actually do it and then they won't deal with black women anymore. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so he's scared. He's scared. He's so afraid of black male agency and autonomy that they'll act on it and form loving, nurturing families with women that might not look like us, that he's willing to, to throw you under the bus and tell you not to do that, that it won't work because he would rather you either not have a family or have a family where you suffer and your kids suffer than actually give you family planning agency and autonomy that would actually work for everybody in the long run. So all this like I'm, I'm a structural realist man we know that's bullshit dude you're no structural realist you are what you call a bjs Ibmore is what you call a court holder go back into that audiobook that i have it's called winning through intimidation it, it, it talks about 
different archetypes of people that you're going to deal with in business and in life. And one of those types of archetypes is what you call a court holder. And he breaks it down masterfully in the different archetypes of people. And just go, you know, go through the videos. You'll find it. There's a bunch of videos because it's broken up into pieces. But you can find it. It's called the court holder. Or you could just PDF the go. You can do a free PDF search for the book called Winning Through Intimidation and just scroll through the chapters and do a control F until and then and type in court holder and then it'll pop up. And what you'll find is a perfect description of BGS Ibmore, which is somebody who wants to sound the smartest, who wants to sound like they have all the information that that will uh try to destroy you if you debate him and argue with him or you have a different opinion and he tries to put himself up above everybody else but the reality is is that they're frauds and they're built on quicksand and they're highly insecure that's bgs ibmore that's bgs ibmore and he's highly insecure that's why he doesn't want black men to have family planning agency and autonomy this is why he he, he, he might put SYSBM in a couple of his videos, but he doesn't mean that. He just does that to keep the wolves at bay. He feigns support of that. He feigns support of Passport Bros. He understands it. He gets it. He doesn't hate it, but he doesn't support it. And he doesn't want to embrace it and use that as a hammer to actually break the gynocracy and force it to change. Because then people won't keep then because then black men will actually even date out even more and ultimately that's what he takes issue with and that's speaking weakness into black men because you only have one life to live and you're not going to want to form a family with a woman who's dysfunctional that's ultimately going to try to destroy you and break up your own family and separate you from your kids and bring you know the court into your life and into your pocketbooks and to monitor monitor you and the way you're raising your children you don't want that shit for you i don't want that for you so if we've got to find new women to start families with then that's just what it is i'm not going to sick that evil shit on black men or allow that to happen And I'm not saying that BGS is necessarily, he's doing that, but he's still speaking weakness into black men by not using SYSBM as a hammer. He should be fully supporting that. As many anti-gynocracy, and same with uh, Edward Anderson, as many anti-gynocracy videos that you have, you should be using SYSBM as a hammer. See, what happens, well, see, and this is the thing. I'm actually good with women. Unlike those two, I'm actually good with women. I actually don't take shit from women. I I lay down the law with women. I don't debate them. I, you know, I'm not going to be going back and forth with them. I'm not going to be yelling at them. I just lay down the law, and that's just what it is. So when you hear me talk to women, you go, man, true, you talk about submission. But then when you talk to women, you, you don't like come at them like that. And it's like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that because if they don't submit, they're not one. They're not part of. They're not a part of my tribe. They're not in my. They're not one of us. They're like the. You know, I'm not going to scream at somebody who I don't really. Who's not a part of what I need or be a part of. That you know, you got to be in my group for really for me to care. So if you're not in my group, you're just not in my group. I'm gonna just tell you what it is. And if you, if if you can't subscribe to what it is, we're gonna find somebody else who's gonna subscribe, and it's not gonna be hard to do that. Period. Period. And part of this too, you know, is speaking strength in a black man, and this is really one of the things as black men that we need to do, is we need to be willing to give ourselves, give our all to women. You want a woman that you're willing to give 100% to. And, that, and I definitely don't mean simping. I don't mean breaking yourself i don't mean putting yourself at risk in any real capacity i don't mean putting yourself in into meaningful harm or meaningful risk what i'm talking about is letting women into your life only if they meet a certain standard only if they've proved themselves only if they've shown you and proven their loyalty and their dedication and you understand what motivates them 
based off their core values. So you know that they want the same things that you want, that they have the same goals that you have, where two become one, that they that you know for a fact, based off track record in your life, that they have sacrificed for you in ways that another woman, another person wouldn't, another woman wouldn't. So you know she's a rider on your team, and that's the type of woman that you're willing to give a hundred percent to. And you do that understanding that the risk is very low. But a lot of black men don't even think that's possible because we've got a lot of black men that speak weakness into other black men. And I see this with Sergeant Willie Pete too. I see a little bit with this with Sergeant Willie Pete too. Because here's the thing. The, the reality is that uh, I love some Sergeant Willie Pete. I love Edward Anderson. I love BGS Zibmore. So these aren't, these aren't necessarily personal attacks, and I'm not trying to start beef so much as I'm seeing these observations, and I don't like what I'm seeing at all, and I'm just gonna tell you what I see. And what I see with Sergeant Willie Pete is that he knows, man, that other demographics of women are much easier to work with and easier to marry. I think most of us do. And it's like, you know who else kind of does this is black mind. I've told, I've made videos to Black Mind. I wrote in his comments section before, and and I told him, "Look, dude, why do you keep why do you keep talking down on white women like that? You, it's, it's like you keep you, you're lying on Becky. Why do you keep lying on Becky? And I'm not gonna cape for Becky or none of that. Like she's gonna get drugged like the rest of them is gonna get drugged when it, when it's time for them to get drugged. But what he likes to say, and what Sergeant Willie, and, and what uh, what Edward likes to say is that. Oh, black men are going after white they're dating white women it's latinas you gotta watch you gotta watch about or you know them go they're going down to south america is the melanated women right and it's like dude i don't really care so much as it's just not true i wish it was true but it's really not true the reality is that when black men marry interracially they marry 60 percent of black men marry white women which is an overwhelming majority which means there's 40 percent left for everybody else to split up so most black men are marrying white women and what they try to do is make it seem like it's abnormal when it's completely normal because that's what black men are overwhelmingly doing and when these guys know that that's the truth because i both told them they and they know and then they pretend that they don't know what they're really doing is speaking weakness into black men because what they're saying is that no nah, black men you're if you go for a white woman then you're doing something wrong and it's like that's that's because you speak with we you speak to black men with weakness when a black man forms a strong intact family with a woman who loves him who's nurturing who is going to be a great mother who's going to be loyal who's dedicated to him her children that family structure and she you know she's a just a good woman with good core values it doesn't matter what the girl's skin tone is he can't go wrong. You can't you can never go wrong when that woman is going to give you everything she's got and lay it down for you and create successful outcomes in your life. That black man can't do it wrong when he marries a woman like that. So when you say that, you know, you're steering black men away from the largest demographic of women outside of black women that can make quality wives for you in this country, then you're speaking what weakness in the black man. And I'm not saying Kate for Becky, you know, I'm not saying be pro interracial, but what I'm saying is if you really wanted to break the gynocracy, your whole tone should change. I don't like, and this word, this is what Sergeant Willie Pete doesn't say and how he speaks weak weakness in the black men is like what I say is that black men, you need to go get yourself a submissive wife, a quality woman who loves the shit out of you, who's dedicated, loyal, who's going to be a great ma mother, no matter what color she is. As a matter of fact, if you can't find a black wom woman, then you're insane not to date other types of women, including white women and say, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't date white women. Okay, fine. Well, then find a different type of woman. And if you can't, you're not going overseas, but you could find a white woman, woman and you don't, and then you don't have a family simply because she's white. 
Well, that just sounds like internalized white supremacy. That sounds like the racism has got to you so bad that you look through the, you're looking into the world through the eyes of white supremacy itself. And Sergeant Willie Pete knows, because I've heard, I've talked to him about it, I've heard him say it, he knows that white women are, are really the most apt woman in America to actually marry a black woman, to marry a black man, and they actually like black men quite a bit. They're actually the easiest to marry. It's kind of crazy. But yet he won't, lay, he won't use SYSBM as a hammer and just say, black men, replace these women. Replace them. Replace them with women that can make you happy. And I say that, now keep in mind, the reason I say that is not to promote interracial marriage, to say white women are all that, or Asian women are all that, or Latino women are all that. The reason I'm saying that way is because what I know to be true is that when black men collectively say that, is going to be the day black women start to get on board. And, and, and BGS knows this. Isn't he the one, remember he did that presentation years ago where he said that, black men are like the, are the vessel they're like a vase of water and women are like the water itself so you pour that pitcher of water which is female into the male base and the women fill up the men so the men have to have a base this vase they have to have some type of receptacle for the women to fill well that's a culture of black men requiring submissive women and choosing submission over everything else but when black men refuse to create that vase that receptacle for women to fill and to tell black women we require submission and, and bjs goes no don't require submission when well, you're telling black men not to require submission then what the hell you want black women to fill what do you want them to do what do you want black women to do you don't want them to do anything you don't want black men to do anything you just want to complain about black women you're not t not telling black women giving them some solutions you're not telling them what to do you're not laying down the law you're not you're, you know you're hating on other black men who actually do you're feigning sys sys sysbm uh, uh, support so now it just looks like you, are you just an agent of chaos see now this is where man tomorrow comes in because he's right about this. Because all they want to do is keep saying the same things over and over and over and over instead of pro providing solutions because they've made a YouTube career out of this gynocratic problem that they don't want to see solved. Which again is speaking weakness into black men. And what we need is more black men speaking strength into black men and to all this cowardly bullshit this intellectual dishonesty, this fake pro-black nonsense that BGS Ibmore talks about. Dude, this is a guy who, this is a guy who said he had a subscription to Coast to Coast AM. He admitted that on air. He admitted that Coast to Coast a AM is a late night screwball AM radio conspiracy theory channel. Like it's basically the AM radio for of Alex Jones. That's basically what it is. And they have these dumbass stories at night. And BJS Ibmore, that's what he says. He, he had a subscription. He paid for that. He liked it so much. So you know he's not a structural realist. He's into this pro-black conspiracy nonsense. And he's smart and you know he'll do his homework, but he's not who you think he is, man. He ain't all that. He's not a structural realist. This is the same, this is the same guy who said he's not in a geopol he's not in the domestic politics. He doesn't want to talk about national politics. So black men who are being put behind the eight ball, who you say need policy changes, you say you don't want to talk about domestic domestic politics? <laughs> you just want to see the chaos, bro. Oh, now, now, now you want to talk about politics. Now, now, years later, now when you've been called out, called on the carpet, now you want to talk about politics. You're just trying to save face, bro. You're trying to save face. And this is the issue, too. So then he drags a guy like Tia San Johnson in with him. Tia San Johnson, man, you got to be careful with this, bro. BGS is using your PhD to prop him, himself up. And he's he's dragging you to into a place that you don't belong, man. Be uh, seriously. He 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 hurts your credibility. Like I love BGS, but I'm not gonna lie, man. I don't think he's good for the Tiasan Johnson brand because he doesn't. 
because BGS doesn't believe in real solutions. Now, maybe Tiasan John, Johnson doesn't either, so that's on him. And, you know, if, if he wants to side up with this guy, he doesn't. But I was looking through Tiasan Johnson's plan for black men, and I thought it was a pretty good plan. I, you know, I thought it was good. It was actually a good plan. But I was looking at one of the names on there, and it was like BGS Ibmore was on there, and and one of them was uh, who was it was the guy who actually started Ibmore. Um, what's his name? I can't remember what his name is. He's the one who started Ibmore, and I don't have anything against the guy personally, but I have seen his videos over the years, and he's like a paranoid schizo, like certified paranoid schizo. He would make videos, and they would go. He would say this. They would it would have this like guy it would be like a guy or girl would walk across the video and the guy would be he'd be recording live out on the streets he'd be on the sidewalk or something at some plaza and he goes look that's a simulation that's a simulation character right there he's not even real did you see that and he's got these paranoid delusions that people were actually si simulations and then this same guy who created Ibmore, he's got all these videos talking about look this person's trans and that person's trans and this person's trans like all these videos where he said he was obsessed with trans people it's the craziest thing and so this guy who's got mental and i've talked about religion and and mental illness so this guy who's got deep mental in illness created it more and now you have guys like bgs are following a, a guy with deep schizo mental illness and he's following that and then he's teaching he's trying to teach you on how to form your own family structure or how, how not to form your own family structure this is men mental illness. This is speaking weakness into black men instead of speaking strength into black men. So then I'm looking at Tia Son Johnson's plan and he's got this Ibmore creator on there. I can't remember his name. Abe of Ibmore or something like that. Abe, Abe? Yeah, it's Abe something. I can't remember his name. Abe, uh, Adagun Forrest. It's Adagun Forrest. And I don't mean any disrespect to the dude. I don't really, I don't really, I never listened to his old content. Maybe he devolved over time. He seems like he, he's funny, he's smart. It seems like, you know, he's, he's, he says some crazy shit, some violent stuff sometimes. You, you know, you got to really watch out for when guys talk about violence like that. But I saw Tia San Johnson put this guy's name on his plan. And I'm thinking like, Tia San, no, John, Dr. Johnson, you've got a PhD. You should be separating yourself from people like this because they hurt your brand. And BGS shouldn't even, BGS should know better. He should, he should say, no, nah, you need to take him off here. Like maybe even if he did contribute to the plan, we can't put him on there like this, man. This hurts your brand. But this is the thing. I don't think BGS don't care about that shit, man. I just don't think he does. He doesn't care about that. He doesn't care about black leading black men astray. He doesn't want to see you win like that. He says he does, but I don't necessarily think that's what it is. He's trying to build himself up and keep everybody else stat you know obsessed about the same women that he won't change in his own life i know you see it i know you got to see that too so just what it is man i mean you know we got again it just comes down to this pro-black culture uh really not evolving in a new era we're in a new era right it's like in 2022 it's easier to get a non-black wife than it is to get a black wife that's just the reality. That's that's the truth. Everybody knows that's true. And, you know, these, these guys, these guys, they got this old model of pro-blackness that they want to, you know, stick with. And that shit's dying out. And it just looks absurd right now because it just doesn't help black men in the way that, you know, we'd want it to help black men, but it just doesn't. And so we need new content. We need new ideas. We need a new culture, a new structural framework for black men in the way that we talk to one another, in the way that we form our own families, the way we do business, just the way we look at money and finance and our careers. And these people who are stuck in the past and, you know, and they're more, they're, they're stuck more in pro-black ideology. We, we, they're a separate group, man. They're really a separate group from us. We're, we're all black men. We all are on the same side of the table, you know, to one, from one, to, you know, maybe on the same side of the table, but we're like totally, I don't know that we're on the same side of the table anymore. I, I don't know that. I really got to think about that more, more because when you have black men that will try to lie to you and gaslight you and say, there's no, oh, and this is one of the things that 
BGS said, he goes, there's no symbiotic relationship between culture and and uh, between symbiotic relationship between culture and politics. Did I talk about that earlier? So basically, well, you kicked me off his panel. BGS kicked me off his panel because I said that there's a symbiotic relationship between culture and politics and black men need to create a culture for ourselves by ourselves for ourselves when it comes to our own family structure and that that culture that we build for ourselves will help shape policy and he goes no that won't work black men shouldn't even try i said he's t yeah, i said it before and he, he was speaking weakness in a black men and so he kicked me off and i get why he kicked me off for saying that because i probably wouldn't want i wouldn't want to hear that either i might kick a dude off for saying that but i had to say it because it's absolutely true so wh what do you do with that? What do, you, what do you do with that when you got, you know, 65 year old guy, you know, guys in their 60s approaching 70 years old who want to speak for black men, but tell them that they shouldn't build a culture for themselves that empowers us within our own family structure. That shit's insane. And he goes, we got to go to the federal government and go through politics and go to the white man first because we shouldn't even try. There's nothing we could do. <laughs> That's fucking weak as fuck, bro. That is just weak. That is weak weak right so it just is what it is man it is what it is because the reality is that there's a lot of ideas and concepts is or, or is is passing by the black manosphere the black manosphere is going to be a dinosaur not necessarily in numbers but in ideas it's like the, the, the black manosphere is stuck on talking about black women as, oh, look how they victim, victimized us. Look how they ditched us. Look how, you know, this black woman said this in this video and look how this woman treats her children. And oh my goodness, in this next video, look what she said about black boys and black husbands. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> it's just, just like, well, bro, stop it. Stop it. We already know what it is. Like, what do you, it, it, that's breeding weakness into black men. A, it keeps black men from using that time to speak about or listen about or learn about something that can actually empower them. Why are you keeping them focused on the worst types of women, on these low class, low level, family destroying women that don't want the same things as black men and that aren't in our same group? Those women aren't in our group. They tell you they're strong and independent and they don't need a man and they want to get the bag and, you know, niggas ain't shit and, you know, and all this and is it's, it's, it's sex positivity and, and poly and butter, you know, but, butterfly eyelashes and weave and we don't care what you think we do this for us you know they could they want to be single moms and single mom by choice and all this and instead of focusing in on the women that you do want we focus in on the women that, you know that you don't want that really don't want you either and that's speaking weakness into black men instead of speaking strength into black men because the reality is is that for most black men the women that would make the best wives and partners for you are not in the gynocracy many of them won't be black they won't be black adults you can find some africans for sure and a lot of them will be college educated a lot of those women these women are going to come from two-parent homes a lot of these women are going to have successful careers and they're going to be smart many of them are going to be smarter than myself there's just a lot of hardworking, intelligent, educated women that want families. They want an intact family structure. They want happy, successful marriages. And sorry, a lot of black men aren't producing th these types of women because we're just not. And I think as black men, we need to change that. I think speaking strength in a black man is, is saying black man. If you want a successful, thriving community, then you're going to have to raise daughters that are going to make great wives for our, for black sons, for your black sons. And that means you're going to have to find a woman who wants the same thing for the children of black men. And if you're choosing women that don't want the same things as black men, you're going to continue to get these wild ass results. So you have no other option but to choose different women. And choosing different women doesn't mean a different quote unquote race of women. It means choosing a different culture of women. So she can be black, she can be Eidos. But for many black men, if they if they want to have thriving intact families, it's gonna be with non-black women. And the beauty of this is that, yeah, it looks like you're you know, it, it can be seen by through the lens of uh 
pro pro black traditional pro black ideology that you're being a sellout but I, I i beg to differ i think that by not doing that you're selling out because what you're really doing is you're selling out to this old paradigm of pro-black culture instead of ushering in a new concept of pro-black culture which is better than the old and more effective than the old culture and ends up netting the type of results that you want in the long run so yeah you might have more white girls in the culture and more asian women and more latino women and more women outside of america in the culture but in by doing that what you do is you set up a culture by black men for black men and the families and the wives and the daughters and sons of black men so that the other so that the ados pathology and the gynocracy starts to look at that and go yo we might as well hop into this new culture because it's better than the old culture and in this way this is how you use sys sysbm as a hammer and this is how you speak strength into black men have you ever noticed that when a black man gets with a white woman typically they have a lot of kids she typically stays at home that's because typically a black man and a lot of black men have come from broken homes are looking to have a fully intact home they want a home that they did not have. They want a woman who will be a mother to their children and be happy and honored to stay at home with the kids. On the other hand, a lot of black women have spent many years going to college and working toward a career. They do not have a desire to stay at home with kids. They consider that a downgrade. Here's the thing, if you're looking for something you have to know what that person that you're looking for truly wants. Not what you want to give them necessarily, but what they want. Okay, sis, you're overhyping it a little bit, but I like your premise. She was on point with that. But to say that all these black men are marrying white women to put them on full scholarship so they can be housewives at a young age, that's not really true. That's not really how it works and what's going on. But I think the sentiment is absolutely correct that black men are choosing white women and not just European American women, but just white women, meaning non black women, because they want a loving, nurturing, fulfilling marriage and they want a home that can produce successful outcomes for their children. And it's just a great, a great marriage. And that's why black men are starting to date non black women more and more and more. She's absolutely on point with that. Furthermore, black women should be taking notice of this. And this is what this is the narrative that black men should be saying, because once you build a new culture, then women, black women are going to look at the old culture. And they go, why would I want to deal with this old culture when obviously the new culture for black men is better? I mean, it's, it's obvious. It's, I mean, it just really just speaks for itself. And one of the issues is, is that black men have problems speaking strength into other black men because, frankly, just because we're not acculturated to do that. As a matter of fact, you hear uh, Sergeant Willie Pete say that he goes, oh, black men, they don't, you know, they always talk about hope. They're always, always talking about hope and, you know, and they don't, you know, and there's never enough tangibles. They're not, you know, loaning money to black men for businesses. And I think he's making a valid point in a vacuum that, yeah, uh, all this talk and no action doesn't get doesn't move the needle. But I would push back and say there's not enough not enough black men speaking life into black men and actually instilling hope and vision and dreams and goals into black men. And so I think part of this is that black men. Many of us have our parents weren't married. We uh, when we had children, we weren't weren't married. And so first a lot of us, too, you know, we have kids and our kids don't get married. So this whole idea of black men creating a culture for ourselves that we put marriage and, and intact families and nurturing, loving, uh, uh, fulfilling marriages with submissive women. That probably seems like a pipe dream to a lot of black men because they have simply haven't seen it. They don't know what it looks like. They don't know what it tastes like. So it doesn't seem possible for them. But I'm here to say that it is possible. It most it most certainly is possible. And see, other black men, what they'll say is, well, it just won't work. You just can't do it. We just got to go to the government and, you know, get them to change policies. And then maybe we can do something then. And it's even worse than not believing that it won't work. Like B.J.S. told me in front of everybody goes, 
if black men try to build a culture for like for themselves like that it won't work at all and what's even worse than that is that guys like bgs guys like edward anderson god bless their souls but they actually think that it's immoral to do so they think it's you're betraying black people in a way that's immoral and you're not supposed to date non-black women and start families with non-black women because it's morally wrong and that that puts you in a tough position man and this is why a lot of guys you know a lot of men they struggle to, to speak strength into black men and you know and it's just like this whole tip communist mindset oh we can't do this we can't do that the system's too large we, we need to just buckle under we shouldn't even fight back why would you even try and that's just weakness i don't i don't believe in that at all as black men we should be having strong educations and we should be getting strong educations at a young age and this this would happen if we had intact families <clears throat> and marriages we should be having you know great careers based off our education even if our education is just we went to a uh, you know a, a skilled trade apprenticeship and we became journeymen and then you could have a nice career and you're making good money so you're able to support your family at a young age the way you'd want to and more and more black men should be able to do these things and these are the types of conversation that the black manosphere should be producing instead of celebrity junk content and you know and you have attorneys leading you astray with these wild conversations and phds talking about things that happened 80 years ago that really aren't going to put any money it put money in the pocket of black men today that's not going to really move the needle for black men of today we need a whole new pair. We need a paradigm shift within the black manosphere. I mean, honestly, I'm looking around and the black manosphere, maybe not in numbers, maybe not in subscribers, but in ideas that people are putting forth, man, the, the black manosphere is no longer the leader in that. I can say that we are no longer leading the new ideas of the future. And that's a problem. And this is because there's a lot of stagnation. There's a lot of people in the black manosphere that either want to talk about bullshit or they want to stay stuck on the gynocracy and how they've been beating a hammer up, you know, upside the head of black men for the last 60 years. And all you're doing is distracting black men from having more success in life instead of building a new culture a new a, a culture of success for ourselves because it's this same repeating cycle of bullshit that we've already went over with a fine-tooth comb and now we've got stagnation and people have got real comfortable because they go oh i could make some money off of talking about this over and over and then what they do is they start walling other people off and they go well if you're not going to talk about this and you're going to put in you know and you're going to try to push things forward then you're going to be on the out group and we're going to create our in our own in group so then they create these sycophants and now they have their own you know gynocratic pro-black uh section of youtube within the black manosphere you, you could see it and it's like it, they on the surface, they're anti-gynocracy, but that's all they really talk about is the gynocracy. And then when you try to come with real solutions, they don't want to hear that. They start running the other way. They start ducking in the bushes and, and hiding. They don't want to speak strength, strength in a black man. Right? Too much stagnation and not enough empowerment. How can you say that you're a structural realist and that you want to destroy the gynocracy but then you but then you're going to tell black men not to tell black women that you want them to sub be submissive. You're going to tell black men they shouldn't uh, require submission and that uh, us coming up with a covenant amongst black men, uh, uh, telling black men within the black manosphere and then all throughout social media, throughout the country, throughout the world, that black men should be requiring a certain style of family structure for ourselves. And not that necessarily everybody has to participate, but if you're gonna have a family for yourselves, that we've got a framework that you should adopt, that all black men should adopt to help protect you, to help protect your marriage and your family, and to help produce successful outcomes for your children. And we got this dude who says he's a structural realist, and he says we shouldn't even try. <laughs> And you just watched the video of a woman who's saying exactly what I'm saying is going to happen because that's how propaganda works. That's how memetics work. You take an idea and you spread it from mind to mind and it spreads like a virus. 
and then it grows and then it mutates and the idea that black men could very easily spread is that black men we want to be the most married demographic we want to be known as the best family men we want to we want to be the known as the most family oriented men who are great fathers and great husbands and who raise the most successful children and furthermore we want economic policy public policy to help manifest that and help that come to fruition through federal funds and state funds and you know local mun municipality funds that help fuel programs to allow this to happen and this and this is what i'm saying how there's a symbiotic relationship between culture and policy and I'm, i'll leave some links in the description uh, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's a definite and well-documented relationship between public policy and culture they have a symbiotic relationship now part of this too is subversion black men speaking strength into other black men using subversion i think this gets lost a little bit man with with a lot of guys a lot of times as black men we kind of put all our cards on the table and that's good because you, you want to be a straight shooter, but then sometimes you got to be able to use version. So I'm seeing, you know, just I look, I go to different social media websites and I, and I look at things, but I don't just like read it for entertainment. I read it to see what it's doing. And I see a lot of subversive propaganda. And I mean, I don't have to tell you, you know this, that we live in an era where propaganda is at an all time high where you will see more propaganda in one week than somebody would have seen in a lifetime or maybe five lifetimes a hundred years ago. And so there's a lot of subversion going around, but we don't necessarily see it. So let's just say you're, you know, you're one of these, uh, you don't like interracial relationships, uh, radical pro blacks that, <clears throat> that is so against interracial dating. Well, if you want to see black men and black women back together, perhaps you should use subversion to make that happen. So instead of saying, no, no, no we can't tell black men to to date, uh, to, to require submission because then they're going to go after other women. And then, you know, they really won't be choosing black men instead of shaking in your boots and, and afraid to lay down the law because you think black men will walk away. Why not just interpret that exact same idea as psychological subversion where you're actually putting that on the table because you know that when black men start to say that and it hurts and, and it hits the eardrums of black women and start to penetrate their minds, they're going to start instantaneously to start to look at black men different because we look at ourselves differently because we're creating a new culture that's different. So this idea that black men shouldn't ask for submission or require submission or create a covenant amongst ourselves to develop a culture for ourselves that really cements the type of family structure that black men want for ourselves that can actually produce the outcomes that the black community and, and the in black men's children most certainly need and deserve it seems crazy to shoot that down it, it really does and i think you know it's part of this hotep communism mindset where you tell black men, you know, well, you know, it's not about the money, you know, submission's not about the money. And it's like, yeah, like I actually agree with your point that submission isn't necessarily about the money. It's, you know, it's not like necessarily fundamental to it, but it does make a difference. And you do need some money. Like I would tell black men, if you're making under 40,000, not to get married. And that, and not a, and not a New York 40,000, more like a, you know, like a, like a Memphis 40,000, right? A, a Sacramento 40,000, depending on where you live out, you know, or maybe even, I might even bump that up to 50,000. I think 40,000 is on the low end, but I think, you know, I think 50 is, is a good salary. You make 50, that's a good salary to get married. If you make 40, sure, you can get married, but if you're making 30K, nah, you probably shouldn't get married. You got to get your weight up a little bit. And I think that's just what it is. And uh, and I think that's really what Sergeant Willie P is saying is that you got to have some money. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a, a goal that people should have, but just like the low end of the, the baseline minimum that a man should make if he's going to get married. And that's going to and, and I don't mean on a 
a marriage on a one income salary. I mean, a marriage on a two income salary and the man is making, you know, between 40 and 50 K at a minimum. And so when BGS says, you know, on and on and on and about all this, you know, what about over here and over there? They don't, they don't have it. I'm like, yeah, I agree with you. Like black women are, it's not like they're not submitting because of money, because no matter how much money you make, a lot of these women aren't submitting. And they may be cooperative and they may marry you and maybe the, the relationship and the marriage can work, but it's not really what I would want in my life. I, I don't want a woman, I don't want to have a marriage and a partnership and, and a best friend where she really ain't my partner. It's, it don't, she don't feel like my best friend and the marriage feels very shaky and cold. Like I wouldn't want that for myself and I wouldn't want that for anybody else. And I think that when you have money, what it really does is it gives you options and you can go, yo, I don't need two incomes to survive. So I'm in no hurry to, to pair up with a woman. I could be by my damn self and I can just run through chicks the way I want to run through chicks if that's what I want to do. And then when it comes to picking the right woman, then all I have to do is learn what woman works for me. As a matter of fact, oh, I got a video for you. I'm going to play this for you right now. Hold on. You see what I'm talking about, fellas? It's not that I'm hanging with these beautiful women that you see, you know? It's just, I'm their type. These women are choosing me. Yeah, when I was young, growing up in the inner city, like a lot of you fellas, I chose the black girls. I didn't know that you were supposed to, because my father wasn't there to show me, I had to figure this out from the other OGs in the neighborhood. You're supposed to sit back and let the girls choose you. The women that choose you, those are the women that you deal with. So... Yeah, the black girls didn't want me, but what am I supposed to do? Just not have no girls? Nah, these are the kinds of girls that chose me. The international girls, the, the girls who spoke multiple languages, the girls who was nice, the girls who had manners and morals. I mean, I like ratchet girls, but they don't like me, so what am I supposed to do? <laughs> he said, I like the ratchet girls, but them ratchet girls didn't like me. What am I supposed to do? And I'm feeling that. I, I, I'm feeling that. I got a lot of ratchet girls that were into me. Uh, I would say that they like me, but they didn't like me the way I needed them to like me. That's why I could never deal with it. That's why I didn't like them. That's why, I mean, I wanted to like ratchet girls, but I always look at it like this. They don't let me like them. Like, I got to like you on my terms. I can't like you on your terms because I already could see it in their eyes. You talked, I know what it's about. Oh, uh, I'm going to mistreat you. I'm going to give you a baby that you didn't ask for. I'm going to, I might cheat on you. Uh, it's going to be some gossip. It's going to be some drama. It's not going to be marriage. It's not going to be love. It's not going to be uh, a fulfilling, loving, nurturing marriage. That's not what it's going to be about. It's not going to be about uh, sacrificing and getting in the trenches together and building our life together. So I said, I'd rather just do it by my damn self. I'll just run through chicks the way I want to run through chicks. And when I'm ready to settle down, you know, I'll figure out what type of woman that's going to work best for me. And then I'm just going to get one of those type of women. And as much as I tried to deal with black women in my own tribe, I could just never find the one that wanted to fit with me. It just didn't fit. And I think he's on point when he goes, as men, what you need to do is sit back and choose from the women that choose from you. You got to know what pools of women that you can work with and they will let you know because a woman that you can work with will throw herself at you. Women should be throwing themselves at you because they want to volunteer their submission to you. They want to build a life with you where it's loving, it's filled with cheerfulness and happiness and warmth and, and love and they just and they want you in a certain way work damn near makes it impossible for you to say no because you go damn this is what this is this is a real one we got a we got a live one right here she ain't going nowhere she's loyal she's dedicated she's a worker she's gonna do what i need her to do i can trust her she you know she got them good motherly instincts that you want she's educated you know so she can pour her education into your children like that's that's what it is and so a lot of times what happens is women tell men, well, men are hunters. So men are women. Men are supposed to chase women, you know, and I go, nah, nah, not like that. Right. Yes, it is true that men are hunters. But we don't hunt women. We hunt other prey. Women are our hunting partners. We go out into the field. 
We go out on the savannah, into the jungle. We go hunt big game out here. We might go into the sea and we go, you know, hunt in the sea, in the ocean. And the women are back home and they're tending to the house. They're, they're sharpening our swords. They're, you know, they're working on the equipment. They're, they're processing the, the food and the game that we bring home. Women are our hunting partners. We're, we're not in competition to go hunt a woman. No, she helps us hunt. And different women can help you hunt differently, especially in 2022, because women have a whole lot of skills. You know, most women aren't going to be at the at the home, uh, you know, for you marry. If you say you got married at 25 and, you, you know, and, until the rest of your life, she ain't going to be at home from 25 to the rest of your life. She can help you hunt in a major way. Even if she is a housewife, she could be degreed up. She could have a lot of social con uh, contacts from the social class that she comes from. And let's just say you work as a financial advisor. She could go get you a lot of clients. Let's just say you're an insurance salesman. She can get you a lot of a lot of clients. You could be, you know, sell a lot of different things, and she can get you a lot of clients because of her social network. Even if she, you know, isn't a career woman, she still is connected to to a large body of people who come from resources, and she can help you. She's your hunting partner. But as black men, I see like too many times in the black manosphere, we've got this adversarial relationship with women and the gynocracy that should be adversarial but women as individuals black women or non-black women many of them could be a great partner for you a great wife a great teammate a great hunting partner and that you can you know you can move the needle with but you got to be open to that idea and you have to really have some skills on how to foster those type of relationships to make that type of marriage and that intact intact family for yourself work what's going on man this is let's be frank man my brother my brother my brother truth as i know it man i uh i'm making you this private video man you, uh, you kicked my ass this morning, brother, with that video. But before I get off into that, let me begin by saying, brother, I, uh, sent you that PayPal, man, so you can continue your work, my brother. Because the only way the manosphere, the brothers in the manosphere, the brothers of this awakening to keep this alive is just not through their participation, but through their financial participation as well. So brother, take that, and as I get more, I'm going to sing you what I can. Go ahead, shout your brother out, so that these other brothers will have a name to know that hey, that 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 monetary faith is being put behind your message. 